Pundits Lounge a preview of the 10 races at Ashburton with Matthew Cross, uh, the track, Matthew. Dead four, rails back in the true position at Ashburton. They've had a fair bit of racing uh, over the last couple of months on that surface, with a, in particular the lead-up to the Christchurch Casino New Zealand Cup meeting, Jason. So I would imagine the Saturday running of the Ashburton races will be watched many, many times in the next couple yeah, of weeks. Yeah, always a thing to bear in mind that uh, for a lot of these horses, it won't be their grand final. The first couple of races, though, significant. They're maidens, and we'll see sacred courts in that first race. There's price stuff at 145, while well, we... Crazy, absolutely crazy money, $1.45. So this horse trialled at T-Rapa, everybody saw that trial. He finished second, but he was well clear halfway down the straight. Went to Rickerton Park for his debut. He was shorter than $2, I think. Ended up playing up in the gates, scratched, then had to trial. He did trial, but what I would say about that trial is Lee Calloway rode him in that at about the 150, he went to angle him out. And the horse, I wouldn't say rejected to it, but it was a lot easier for it to go back to the inside. So in terms of tractability, I would have preferred the horse would have pulled out and sort of hit the line. But he went back to the inner and he hit the line OK. $1.45, crazy money. Don't mind She's Gallant from Barrier 12. It's got enough early tactical speed at $3.30. So you'd probably play around that if you didn't like the 45 with the favourite. Yeah, well, what the play is sacred courts to win, but yeah. like, I mean, are you going to steer someone into a dollar forty-five? I won't be. No, um, didn't see that price until we've just fired up the, the this preview. So, top pick for you as well. Mm. Yeah, we'll go with that. But you know, one forty-five just uh, go a bit easy. I'd suggest that it won't start that short. Could be wrong. Anyway, won't have mine at that price. Race number two, this is how things stack up for the second maiden over the distance. Exclaim final savings with Clara. Uh, the shortest with Stella Days there at 580. Yeah, Clara's moved in a little bit too, 380. I like uh, final savings here. Barrier two onto a better track by Savabiel at a final touch. Trialled up well, then copped a bit of a, a tricky testing track last time out. So the 420, runner number 12, final savings, race number two. It's early in the day. I'll have a wee slice of that, Jason, for you. I was happy enough to go with Clara, um, but obviously the market saying that there are a, a few strong chances and then the race drops away. But uh, Clara, for me, final savings there for Matthew Cross and an opportunity to push on and a Look to the third race uh, there at Ashburton. It's over 1,400 metres. You've got Tom Brown at 650. Monza Secuto Cadrona, uh, Diarissimo and Smokehouse Bay. Nice field this. Uh, Jin Lu, you've got lining up fresh as well at double figures. Wasn't the worst of the trials, but this horse here, runner number nine, Alana Rose. This one to be ridden by Terry Mosley. $10.330. Actually trialled them behind Volcano, who's the winner of six races in Respin, who's a stakes winner, and the trial was very, very good, albeit 800 metres. 10 and $3.30 from an awkward barrier. I think that's where you get your value, Jason, and that is my suggested in race number three. OK, I didn't mind, uh, didn't mind the horse that showed uh, a little bit as a three-year-old that uh, Chris Johnson rides, and I think it's possibly worth it in each way or a small win bet. Tom Brown, um, I put it each way in the end, but Alana Rose mm. each way as well for Matthew. OK, race four of ten at Ashburton and uh, checking out the market for it. And Hmm... What do you make of this? I didn't find it a straightforward race, even though Publicis is the clear favourite, because I thought he maybe had his chance last time. But one thing you would say, he's better than a maiden. And Opie's a big factor. Yeah. 220's just getting on the short side. Probably drawn to get up on the speed. Love Lucy. Well, it had no luck last time. I'm willing to put a line through that run. I feel as though she's got ample amounts of ability. But Publis is probably from the draw at 1600. I think he showed he was a little one pace last start. Opie on. If he gets up outside of the speed, then 220's. You wouldn't want it a little bit much shorter than that. But there's a few chances outside of it. So if you're playing exotics, then you could get a good divvy. Should get every opportunity rolling along with Owen Patrick in the saddle. So... Uh, publicist was the, the way that I went um, in terms of selections. OK, all right, we'll get over to race number five, will we? Race number five at Ash Burton, and this is how the market stacks up for it. It's the Sims Bakery 1400, and uh, whipping through their beneficial unfazed devil may care Anana. Look, beneficial was the excellent winning last time. Unfazed just blew out late. Devil may care got smashed at the start and that seemed to completely switch him off and after that wasn't a factor. How did you read the race here, Matthew? Uh, look, this is... I, I feel as though there's going to be a lot of winners coming out. You're going to, you're going to probably laugh at me. $33 pin-up Cope's actually my suggested each way bet in this race. Uh, she's by pins. Take you back to her first up run. 1,200 metres was a, far too short. Go back through her last campaign. She's run around in the Lowland um, in Gold Trail Stakes at Hastings. She's 
Credential wise got form behind Dijon Bleu and Savvy Cope, moving on to four year olds, very strong form lines. But I don't mind the way that you're having a look at this race either. Oh, look, pin up Cope, I backed it each way last time mm. and was disappointed. Um, so, you know, why not go again at that price? Uh, beneficial and unfazed, look, they are quite short, so you might want to pick just one of them out. Beneficial had a little doubt as to how much she really wanted to punch out and win her races, but she did that well mm. last time. Uh, she's come back excellent. Um, so, Mm, she's going to be hard to beat. Unfazed as well will be improved. So More I'd, of a spec thing for me here. No, oh, and fair play at over 30 to 1 and um, a good place price. Uh, race number 6 and uh, pushing on to the Rainer Irrigation. Fertigation Invitational Open. Shouldn't have started reading that name. <laughs> Flag the groom and residential there. Um, the, the shortest of those. How did you read this race? Residential hard to catch. 54 kilos with a kilo off. Obviously gets in here quite well into 270. Already flagged the groom out of barrier number one with Chris Johnson, may get the opportunity to lead with Kaharo being fresh up. Residential needs all of its stars aligned, Jason. The 270 can probably leave me out of that. There's some each way shopping around a few runners here. Flag the groom might be the horse that I'd be willing to shop. Maybe not on the each way at the prices, but a small win bet on that. Yeah, take your point about the price of residential. That's well found. However, she is the top selection for me. Yeah. Don't you hate it when you go too deep into saying something you can't reverse? <laughs> you, you just got to keep pushing on. So that's what we'll do. Race number seven. And uh, this is uh, the market for uh, the next on the programme. Starting to get into the good races now, and this is the best on the card, the Barnswood Farm at Group 3 level. With expression, a dollar eighty hour flying ace two sixty. We did cover this off on the first call. Um, so, where did you end up going? Expression as well. Expression, clear top pick mm. for all of the reasons that we mentioned. Our flying ace, the race last time was run at a slow tempo, and they just scooted up the lane. One eighty in terms of your market, you had it marked a lot shorter. So, technically, it's an over. Yeah. Um, It'll be a really, um, like I guess it will start to really shape this weekend. It'll really shape the Guineas markets with uh, the Barnswood Farm and also the Sarton Memorial at Tarapa. Mm. And yeah, with Avantage coming out of the Guineas officially, um, it's really open for a horse-like expression to stamp yourself uh, and maybe make her the horse to beat outside of Melt mm. um, for the Thousand Guineas. If Indeed, they go that way with Mount. Dollar 80 and over. I'm pretty keen on it. So is Jason, so grab a slice. Race number eight, and this is the uh, McRae Painters and Decorators Ashburton Cup Prom Queen. This time last year was winning the Barnswood Farm in brilliant fashion, and she lines up in the open, uh, over 1,200, the Ashburton Cup. The barrier draw is probably the only thing that doesn't have her under $2 out there Because a bit of pace, right? Like Sabre yep. and Jazzman are horses that really can push push the issue. And I think that's probably significant for, for Signify as well in terms of where he's going to settle in the speed. Last time when he won we saw him get up handy to the pace for a horse that in the past we'd seen him get back off the speed but look over 100 metres the first 100 metres yes Jazzman's quick out but would you want to leave Prom Queen out there? Fresh up Jazzman. I think she'll find a way to the lead and she'll win $2. And if she doesn't I, I, I think if, they, if they're going fast Sam Collett was prepared to just sit off them last year. If they go really fast and two pair off, then I don't think there's a drama her sitting just in behind them as long as they're going decent tempo and they don't sit up mm. and therefore Sam Collett has to sit up. If they run at an even, uh, uh, even sectionals over the 1,200, I just think whether she sits outside the lead, on the lead or just behind the lead, she'll win. OK. Throw race, us through multis. Yeah. Well, race number nine. Um, and uh, checking out the market for the JJ Limited 21. And... Uh, you've got Major Tom and Blue Lagoon, uh, three ninety and five dollars fifty. Richard of York, I thought, started to show last start that he wasn't far away. Mm. Twenty one hundred metres, you think, is ideal. Just wonder about the pricing. Bully Boy's three and a half kilos better off than the last run against Richard of York. Four eighty v three dollars and ninety cents. And Bully Boy's a horse that is very, very hard to get past when he gets himself in the early rush. Richard of York, he's a genuine stayer and 3,200 mm. metres at some point is going to suit him, but mm. I can't fault Bully Boy and I love the fact that he's longer at $4.80. I'll take a slice of that. I think that distance increase is obviously weighing mm. big time on the assessors of that market and how the market itself reacts to that yeah. over the next uh, 24 hours or so will be intriguing. Like Major Tom's form from the north and the form that he brings, he's going to have to carry weight and concede weight to others. Uh, but I think it's top form. Any and query left-handed? Oh, no, I don't think so. OK, But yes. um, I haven't sort of seen anything that would make me yeah. go, oh, that's not ideal, but... Should be a good race. Yeah, it will be. An excellent race and a pointer race for things 
over the Cup Carnival. One more race, race 10. And uh, this is how the Ashburton MSA Liquor Centre 21, or the market for it looks. Back to Masters 340, the favourite. You've got Wagner and Yamato Narashiko well in commission with Golden Bay and Hattrick Boys. Anything outside of those, Matthew? I suppose pickups well in commission at $5.50. How did you sort of sort the last out? And was there a, is there a blast out horse? Yes, the 11, Misty Arella, straight oh, yes. out of Maidens. Comes to barrier number two, and she might be a bit of a mapping special here over the 2100 metres as they run into the first bend. She's got enough pace to put herself on the speed, and I thought she would have been single figures. Corey Campbell is so in form at the moment. Mm. If you're taking quaddy tickets, Miss Diarella in the last is definitely the horse at double figures that I would not be leaving out, but back to master does look hard to beat. How much value are you getting out of uh, Corey Campbell's three <laughs> kilo claim? If you're a trainer or an owner wanting to put him on, you're getting a super value for that three. I'm with back to master in the last. That wraps our look at the 10 races at Ashburton on the Punters Lounge. All the best wherever you're having a bet around New Zealand or Australia this weekend.